and welcome to Raw Down. I'm your host, Tyler, and we got who's on the podcast. Say it. Who's here? My name is Joe. Oh, there's Joe, yeah. Who else we got? <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, bro, you'll never believe it, bro. Russo's nephew? Unbelievable. Holy crap. No, it is we just Nika. We got, we got four people on this podcast? That's crazy. Yeah, Martin's here. He's, he's hiding. He'll come out later. We got a live sex celebration to talk about, guys. Well, that's a way to start. And I know it's a night for first. Is Martin even here? Yeah, it's a night for first. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, he's No, he's sitting back, and he's enjoying the live sex celebration, uh-huh. just like John Cena. Uh, that guy that uh, tries to post uh, image macros and everything that happens on every wrestling show all the time. <laughs> where he's just bubbles swearing. If you can come on, but actually don't. You might My kill fucking me. god, dude. Please, please uh, tell me who that is, Joe, so we can uh, name drop. He just appears in my timeline. He just <laughs> appeared one night. I don't know what his name is because he got a stupid name with a million numbers after it. I mean, this guy this guy gets fucking, fucking people, you know. One time he had fucking Mickey Mouse doing an NXT show or some shit. Uh-huh. The man's a legend, okay? We're going to have to get him on. I, I, I simply don't understand. I can't comprehend the level that he's operating on. <laughs> To put oh, it man. simply. None of the tweets get any engagement, but he just really goes for it. Like, at least 100 tweets per every episode of every wrestling show. It's truly incredible. And no repeats over the month, either. How does he do it? Bro, he's got love for the game. He cooks. And I'm all there. For... So, do you guys want to get into this Raw? Because no. this Raw was wild. This no. Raw is going to get into somebody. That's for sure. That's right. That's why we start off with Mr. Jonathan Cena. <laughs> You know, yep. and he. Comes All right, out. Yes, uh, he uh, let's let's talk about John. Yeah. Uh, okay, because like I said, I mean, he was there last episode, but he wasn't really like a big part, at least to me. Like, I I didn't even know he was champion until the match he had, and they said on commentary a few times. So, like I said, John Cena probably this was his first championship run that just ended, right? Or was it his second? Um, I think it was his first. Yeah, because he must have okay. beat JBL at Mania twenty one. I don't think he lost it in between. Yeah, so I know they would be commenting on the polarizing opinion, and you hear that in, like, the pay-per-view. Like, it is heavy anti-Cena when at the end of that pay-per-view last night. But this crowd seemed to be all in on Cena. I didn't really see a lot of, like, Cena sucks or anything. Did you guys? Or it was like a mixture crazy? of both. Yeah. I, there were definitely like pro-Cena of... bias in that crowd, but we, we were getting a little yeah. bit of Cena suck. And really, just in time where, you know, when Lita came out to with the WWE Championship and in proxy of Edge, you know, the crowd was working against her, you know? I think somebody was saying you... They were, they were properly, you know, they were telling her she sucks and she's... Wow. Uh, She's a she's a, a miscreant of the of the sheath and and things like that. Miscreant of the sheath. Uh huh. Yeah, they were saying that it was a very long chant. <gasps> yeah, they were into it though. John Cena also stated that uh, ten million people are drinking his haterade, and then he says ass, and that's my favorite part of the whole promo. Somebody has a sign that says the chump is here, <laughs> which is just <laughs> that's just an absolutely horrendous sign. They really got him. So John Cena compared himself to Allen Iverson, and I got so mad. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I, I hate to break it up, but I gotta talk about the signs because, like, <laughs> it, it is a stark difference from like everybody used to bring fucking signs, and now now they don't. I barely like. There's some people who bring signs, but it is not like it used to. Like you look at that crowd, there are signs everywhere. Now it's like you know you see a few in the fuck in, in like the crowd, but it's nowhere near like it used to be. And, and only like again, it's only like ten percent of the signs are comprehensible. By the way, I have no yeah. fucking clue what they either say or are supposed to mean. Like I can understand the chump is here and the ones that just appear to be the person's name with an arrow pointing down. Otherwise, just a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, I know there's the no sign with a bunch of like. Uh, thumbs down. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, Cena comes out, and he's like, hey, Edge smells bad, and uh, he's cashing in his rematch, and then Lita comes out, and Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, moving on. No, 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 no. She said she gave Vince oral oh, persuasion. Oh, oh, oh listen. Oh, I was oh, kidding. Yeah. I just meant that I had a high <laughs> oh. level of respect for Lita at this time. Yeah, but I yeah. No, I did too. That. Poor, poor Lita. Yeah. You know Vince is yeah. laughing uh, back. They're going, ah, ah. Yeah. yeah, and she kind of, I think she almost fumbles the line a bit, 
Because she looks like she was going to say something else. Say I couldn't it. tell if, yeah, I couldn't tell if she was, uh, that was her, like, conscience kicking in, or if she just messed it up, or if she was just really good on promos. But, uh, uh she's good, but. I've, I've seen Lita versus the English language on a lot of WWE pre shows. <laughs> I'm inclined to believe it's a fumble. Um, okay. anyway. Because I yelled over it, uh, she basically comes out and says, John Cena, you're not getting your rematch tonight because I sucked Vince's dick, so it's going to be at the Rumble. People start calling her a slut. I figure out this is the live sex celebration episode, and I am very <laughs> excited about that. I, I was, it's a menage a trois. Yeah. I was uh, so Lita, elated to find out that this was that episode. Lita says, yeah, unlike Lita. you last night, Edge is going to last longer than two minutes. Yeah, Cena uh, was pissed. We're going to stop there for a sec, because Cena was pissed, rightfully so. He just ran through five guys back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> so excuse Cena for not being able to finish up some fucking twinky little Canadian and Edge, okay? Was that the, was that the all lows accepted? Uh, <laughs> None, yeah, none, none refused in none the elimination refused. chamber. It's two, two, it yeah. two miles of solid meat chain. <laughs> and yeah, then uh, they're going to add themselves a list of people that have uh, fucked on the WWE title. Uh, Lita tells the crowd and audience, nobody there can fuck good. And then Cena calls her a one-woman hooker parade and says, your boyfriend smells, I'm going to beat him up. It's basically the segment. It's not that fine, I guess. But Yeah, it's... It... <sighs> John Cena definitely like he's still he's you could see his charisma but honestly like I enjoy the later John Cena promos I think he's fantastic on the mic nowadays back then he's definitely you could see the green but he's I, got that charisma he's stuck I have in... to say, I was gonna say and I think you were probably going the same way Martin is that he's still like transitioning out of like his doctor of thugonomics thing because he's yeah. still he's still and it's it's unavoidable to not hear it he's still got like a twin wang of like white guy pretending to be a white guy rapper yeah voice in it like he's he's yeah. he's putting a little bit he's putting a little too much english on it you know what i mean yeah he's yeah. between fruity pebbles john and rapping john like you said and it just doesn't yeah like you said exactly what you said i don't know why you even talking or you got it like, no I, that's a perfect analysis that's just unbelievable yeah what do you think mike h that's just unbelievable oh right. shit tim yeah so fine segment vince again as always i just really horny and get get him out <laughs> when i yeah. meet edge at the royal rumble i will beat his ass oh dude i fucking Ooh. popped off for that that's like that's the famous we, got, we, got, we got ass <laughs> This episode yeah. was so good already. I'll Live sex celebration. <laughs> ass meme. I mean, come on. The fuck? Yeah, segment over. And then we get a little tease that we get Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle versus Carlito and Chris Masters, the current Qatar Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions. I love it. I love to see it. I'm glad they're still homies. That is good. We're back, and Mickey James right. is in the ring, and she's just talking about Why how... is she here? Like, why she is she in the she... ring? Who let her in there? I understand, <laughs> but why is she in there? Who let her there? She's not involved in this match at all. I don't know. Lillian sure Garcia can't stop right? her. I mean, look, okay, here's the deal, right? If Lita can get a match move to Rumble Rumble due to all persuasions, I mean, I'm sure Mickey James is all over the fucking place with it. I mean, at least story line-wise. Oh, That's definitely. She's like, she's like orally persuading, you know, whoever's fucking, you know, booking this the show to, to show up wherever she wants to show up. And, and I know it sounds bad to some listeners, but you gotta remember, this is 2006 WWE. This is just how the women are treated in every segment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Every we, episode yeah, that mind, doesn't, doesn't make least, it right. Yeah, we've taken at no. least five minutes to talk about how this sucks and shouldn't have happened. I think we do it every episode, but yes, as always, we do not endorse this. No, not at all. Yeah, so we actually have a women's championship match starting the show. Trish Stratus versus Ashley, the winner of the 2005 Divas search. Wow. And the Incredible. gauntlet match. Well, yeah, but... Uh a broad panties gauntlet match. Yeah. Oh yes. I think now, we skipped over it on the on the last yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we were like, I, oh, shit. well, that's because uh, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you the psychology that goes in the match. It was all to build up May Young. And, no, uh, no, you get before. your own corner for that. <laughs> no, I'm just speeding it up real quick. No, and that that that's the bit. But the point of the matter is, uh. Trish already had the best, one of the best matches last night. So she's at it again. Uh, she starts coming down. Again, I, I like to say that 
out of all of the female wrestlers, Trish has the most regular attire yes. so far that I've seen, at least. Still respectful, and, you know, it's also, but yeah, it, you know, incredibly it's still, uh, accommodating. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I, I think that's a perfect way to put it. And, you know, she comes down, she looks like a champ, she looks like a million bucks, and she comes down, and then Mickey Jane starts talking. She's very upset at the audience. She keeps going, hey, that's not, how, turn off the music, turn off the music. That's not how you should cheer on your women's champion coming down to the ring. And she's like, oh, Trish, go back up, we'll do it again. And Trish... Trish is very annoyed and keeps walking. And Mickey James, the simp that she is, is like, oh, you can just keep coming up. That's okay, too. That's okay, too. And then, you know, she argues with Mickey a bit. And then Ashley Masana, right? Mazzaro, yeah. Mazzaro. And she comes out to uh, Audio Slave, which I didn't expect. And that was the theme song for the Diva contest, so they just kept it. The yeah, I mean, 2006 which... shit I have ever seen. The outfit, the song, it was... <laughs> Just incredible. I remember being she, she, X years old in 2006. Am I right, guys? I remember being X years yeah, old? Yeah. That's right. That, yeah, that's about. Never, well, you'll never learn, you freaks. Everybody listening, fuck you. Yeah. yeah I'm that's. I'm like 80. That, I mean, yeah, that's like the start of that generation. That girls and man. I, I grew up around that stuff. So, like, yeah. I was very, but you know what? She stood out, though. And again, it's like a real song and it stands out. It. It gives her almost like a star like vibe. You know she's what? got like an actual band. I game. feel like it does in a way, but that song wasn't for her. It was for a contest. So it kind of just, yeah. it's kind of like getting the raw theme as your entrance. So you're even less of a star. Wait, than, uh, <laughs> you don't know, get you... me started on Move to the Music by the Union Underground. I love can I theme. Can I just ask real quick? How popular or widespread was the 2005 Diva Search? Like, was this a thing we were seeing on, like, promos on Raw and SmackDown at the time? Or I did you have so. to really be keyed in I think on there was this a famous know segment the song? of uh, The Miz coming out in, like, one of his first segments, and he forgot the, like, WWE shop or the WWE.com website, and he had to, like, look on his hand. <laughs> yeah. So so people did people really know this song, though? Because really the way I'm taking oh, it, because I didn't know this. Yeah, audience Okay. Song. Because the way I, I the way I'm taking it is that like she I don't know I mean it it doesn't make it any better or worse I think but she won the competition so that is like her she was the winner that is her song so yeah yeah I th I think that's a good point Joe I, I have no issue yeah. with it okay no I don't either and you know what like I said it's oh God, you got Chris Cornell too. going at it and uh, is it better no I don't she, know, gets a, man. she gets it's a better just... theme later on yeah. I, I don't know. It. I, I like Be Yourself by Audio Slave, so I'm kind of interested to see what the next theme is. But uh, I think this is great for her. I think it makes her stand out. It's different. It might be, you know, it just, it's, it's, because everybody else kind of sounds like Trish's, at least all the women I've seen come out. It's kind of that bubbly, oh, yo. It's time to rock and roll. Yeah. No, 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 you know, it's down it's, the, down so the this, show. Yeah. So this, yeah, this stands out. I like it. You stand out. That's why we love you, Nico. I know. The match is dog shit. Yeah, the match was awful. It was like a minute and a half, a uh, bunch of, you know, just bad moves. Ashley is so green in that ring. She doesn't know what she's doing. Trish is trying her best. Yeah. Mickey says, I'm done yeah. with this, and starts beating up Ashley. And Trish is Yeah, to defend Trish, because, like, how how dare Ashley give Trish a, a neck breaker? Was that, like, the breaking point? And then, like, a, she, and then Trish kicks out at two, and then Mickey, uh, like, I throws down the gloves and just beats on her. Yeah, basically, that was it. And, yeah, she goes for the, uh, I think it's, like, a bulldog. I guys, I should probably start taking notes when I watch these, but... And then she starts beating on her, and Trish has to, like, break her off, and she won't stop. Like, Trish pulls her off, she, Mickey goes back for some punches, she does it again, you know, and then, like, Trish just kind of walks off after Ashley and kind of... not really but yeah this was uh just to keep setting up mickey and trish it, it was not good after they did a pretty good job yesterday so they're very disappointing ashley wins by dq lillian garcia botches the winner announcement <laughs> this trish one uh, and the announcers have to scramble to be like no 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 and then eventually she corrects it so look and man the commentators were quite on Lillian's ass for that mistake. Uh, they literally, the second she messed up, which is good. They're like, what? How'd she win? Dude. It should have been uh, Ashley's win, not Trash. They were like really on it. That was like, I hate this group of commentators. Coachman, Styles, Lawler are unbearable. I hate them. I hate oh, them. they're 
bad. <laughs> On SmackDown, I- we got we got Taz and Michael Cole, and it's fantastic. <laughs> compared to this. Oh, I bet, dude. These the, the three man commentators are always kind of hard, but like this is not a good setup. And I don't know. I've every time I've heard Joey Styles, I don't think he's that great. People oh, I have, I have a line for him was. later on. It's very good. Excellent. <laughs> Moving along, we got the the Rob Van Dam highlight. He's coming back at the Royal Rumble. Can you believe it? Cool. I like that. You know, yeah, I mean, like cool. surprise surprise entrants are like their like their thing. You know, but like it's sort of if you're kind of in and out. You know, like oh RVD. You know, I wouldn't have bought the pay per view for RVD, but I could see why some people would he buy the pay per view for him around that time. You yeah. might have bought yeah. the title at one night stand. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, okay. this, this and, yeah. and it's one of those things where it's like you should hype up your stars who are going to show up in it. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. need to qualify. Like if you're like again, let's say Roman loses belt. If you're Roman Reigns, they should tell you that you're in there. Or if you're like Sami Zayn, just throw you in there at this point, man. You don't need the surprise for everyone. Just do surprises for the surprises. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like every like WrestleMania, like every couple of years have a, like a way to like announce it like sometimes they'll do like qualifying matches like they do now sometimes they'll do like different types of qualifying like i think the show that shall be not that shall not be named does like beat the clock challenges all the time you know what i mean so i like that and sometimes it will just literally be like a clusterfuck like who's gonna be in the rumble i have no fucking idea pull up by the pay-per-view and find out yeah and i feel like it's gotten really bad lately because the people who get announced ahead of time that they're coming back usually win it so it's like uh yeah well batista you had cody yeah uh who else did we have a couple was was batista announced to be in the royal rumble tournament yeah that was in 2014 okay i just didn't know if he was announced for like entering uh what else i'm trying to think if there was another one I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I mean, he, ha- he having two in the past ten years is pretty pretty rough. Is it? I would say so. Like, it kind of kills it. Like, if you wanted to have a big return and have him win, I'd say keep him hidden. That's fair. Especially with Batista, because that was like what four years at that point. It was pretty egregious in 2014. Yeah. Tune in in 2045 when we get. To- <laughs> Then we got Vince McMahon confronting Cena in the back. He's just yelling Jesus. at his... <laughs> Vince says, I got your rematch. And Cena's like, I know what you did. I see. I, I, I know what happened to you, but I appreciate it. And Vince's like, all right, listen, you don't interfere because uh, if you do, you're not going to have your match. And Cena's like, I'm just going to watch like everybody else. And that you need to get checked out because he <laughs> has some tracks. He wants... Yeah, he says he wants to watch it because it's going to be freaky. Yeah, one of them is a certified that, Yeah, and then tells Vince that Vince has come on his pants. You got some tracks. <laughs> no, he, he has, he's got some oral persuasion on his pants. That's what he tells us. I mean, I, I like how Cena was very... He, he was both professional and smooth, but still kind of, you know, in his face about it. Uh, again... It, it's nice not to just see the angry guy, because we're going to get that one pretty soon here, of angry man angry that he's screwed over a couple of times. I thought it was a good segment. Not my favorite of the Vinces, because that's going to come much later. We got Carlito in the back. Chris Masters says, why did you do this to me? Why? And Carlito's like, come on, bro. You can count on me. We're going to be a good team. And then he's like, I'm yes. going to put you in the master lock, and you won't think that's cool. Yeah, I mean, Chris, the like, verbally, like, salt him almost. Like, he grabs him by his collar and, like, Rolls up his his fucking dumb Carlito's dumb shirt with an apple that has his face on it. He fucking curls him up and like pushes him up against the locker. He said, "Look, you screwed me over last night. If you screw me over tonight, I am going to destroy you, basically." And threatens the master lock on Carlito. How could he do so, that? And then he pushes him and then leaves. That's not good, man. Yeah, Chris Masters well, was twenty two yeah. at this time. Isn't that crazy? He was super young. Dude, that is crazy. God, dude. <laughs> I have a note on that later, but at some point I figured that out, and I said, man, steroids just really do a number on you, huh? Oh, he's still he in really good 40. shape, though. How do you, yeah. He's still, he's still under 40, then. Or, no, he's, right? yeah. I think he's like 41, 42, 40, maybe 40. Well, if he's 22 in 2006. I think he was turning He shouldn't be 40. So he should be turning 40 this year or the next year. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's look it up. Let's, uh... Unless he's not 22. At he is 40 point. right now. Know. His birthday was January 8th. Okay. So he must have been 23. So, yeah, he's about 23. <laughs> which nowadays, 40 is like your prime. Yeah. I mean, Macho Man got kicked out for being like 40. Fucking Shawn Michaels is 42 at this moment yeah. in 2006. So. Are you saying he's 42 <laughs> years old or he's yes. 40 years old as well? 
42. Okay. And then He's we get 42. Rob Conway, and it, we got a qualifying match on our hands with Chavo Rob Guerrero. Rob Conway's a star. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at him. Now, you 100%. I, I, I think we could all <laughs> agree that if it wasn't for what happened to Eddie, there's no way in how Chavo would have won this match. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, Yeah, but Rob Conway, who cares? I know. I know who cares, but that's us thinking as fans. Like, as a booker, are you going to put in a balding old dude, or are you going to put in Man, this Chavo's built hair up is dude? Rough. With the most. My yeah. first note is Chavo, brother, just shave your head. It's time. Doesn't he get no. more hair later? He lets it grow out later, but he doesn't get more hair. I thought he might have got some surgery, like when he went to like Lucha Underground or something. I swear it looked like he yeah, had Yeah, but that's more. that's literally a decade later. And even yeah, then, no, I think it I mean. barely worked, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't think it took, because he's shaved now. Finally figured it out. Chavo, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but come no, on. we love Chavo Guerrero. He's great. But that's right. It was, a, it was a fine match. It wasn't anything to write home about. It was just Chavo Guerrero beating the snot out of Rob Conway for five minutes. I don't even know if it Conway was, five was minutes. Yeah, Conway was bumping all over the place, and Chavo won basically doing Eddie stuff because the crowd chanted Eddie. Uh, they've been talking about this sex thing throughout the whole show, yep. and uh, in the middle of this, somebody, I don't know if it's Joey Styles or Coach, but... One of them claims that they haven't had private sex in three years because they have a three-year-old. That's Joey. Is... That's what I was going to bring up. Okay. Uh, no, because they keep Joey's saying, fired. they kept saying, Joey, do you even have sex? And he's like, of course I have sex. I have a child. It's three years. I'm like, okay. Okay, Joey. <laughs> Re- renowned sex haver at least one yeah. time. Well, he hasn't had private sex in three years because he has a kid, so he's had sex in front of his kid, is what he said on TV, I guess. Oh. Thank you, Joey Styles. Oh, oh, Joey Styles, man. Brother, what would what would you guys give this match? Man, Ch- Chavo and uh, Chavo and Guy. Yeah, Rob Conway, brother. Rob Conway. Okay, he's got a very expressive face because he showed up. He was like displaying his physique or whatever, and then and then Chavo's theme hit, and he looked like the fucking Undertaker was gonna come out and murder him, well, yeah, Chavo's which is hilarious. Scary, yeah. But yeah, listen, that guy used to be known as Robert Conway, and he was a part of La Resistance, and he was tag team champions at one point. Put I that in the books. completely <laughs> forgot. Put that in the books. <laughs> Yeah, that match was fine. It wasn't anything to write home about. I'd give it like a two. Out of? Five. We've been going mostly five. You f- you, we gotta be, like Dave. You gotta be like Dave. You gotta be like Dave, pal. Fucking Mark. Uh, I'd say I, it's I, the I best it's... match on this show. What? What about the next match? That ma- nah, all right. Well, we'll talk about that then. Okay. <laughs> Carlito. Yeah, I, I don't wait, know. Wait, no, we don't got that yet. Uh, yeah, I'd say two out of five. It's it's a basic match. It, it's there just to get Chavo the win so he can go to the Rumble. Yeah. Which is the right move, but not the Vince move. I was entertained. Yeah, it was fun. So now we got uh, Shawn Michaels in the back with Kurt Angle and Navari. Kurt tells Shawn that last night he had the ankle lock on Masters when Shawn kicked him in the face. Shawn's like, I don't care. I got better things to worry about. And now they're partners. <laughs> so cool i guess how uh, will these two well, opposing forces ever coexist can i trust you yeah well <laughs> no. yeah just no code angle says that to sean michaels uh i think he does it first yeah yeah he bought what's it yeah because they go back and forth sean acknowledges that neither of them is the wwe champion coming out of elimination chamber they have to worry about what's ahead of them, which is Carlito and Chris Masters. So Sean asks Kurt, can he be trusted? Kurt then flexes his Olympic gold medal, of course. which, by the way, he's the only person in WWE history to have an Olympic gold medal. He's like, yo, I this is integrity. I have a lot of integrity. Can I trust you? Because you, like, you know, you kind of screw people over notoriously. Yeah, you're the heartbreak kid. I mean, that's what you do. And then he storms off. Him and Kurt Angle and Davari storm off. Honestly, it's a nothing promo. Why Why are Davari and Kurt... I like Davari and Kurt together. They're hilarious, but yeah. why? Uh, I don't know. They were they were just paired right. up together, I guess. After, Good enough uh, for me. After Muhammad Hassan left, Davari really had nothing else to do. <laughs> so it's kind of tough on him but yeah I mean, he made it uh, out alive, luckily so. yeah no it's fine no uh, it's a good combo it's uh oh, i forgot muhammad hassan that was pretty recent that whole angle right it's like july of 05 okay yeah eh, that's fine all right what's the next segment so we got sean benjamin and his mother talking and oh yeah <laughs> they yeah. spot a vel penis yeah. over there yeah they're back stage and uh for 
some reason, Val Venus is just in the back in a pretty open area uh, with his ring gear on, just folding some towels, uh-huh. like a lot of them. Yeah. I don't know why. I thought he had a gimmick where he just like had to do laundry because I don't know. He fucked up. And uh, made he would him always do it. come like, out with some... the towels. Yeah, okay, I remember that. But like, I thought he was like corporate cane or something, <laughs> or concessions cane. Just had to do shit backstage. But anyway, true. So she's like, oh, I've seen this guy. And then Val Venus like, yeah, dude, I was in Shaving Ryan's Privates and other epic Harry Twatter. movie tales that it's read like 17 years ago. It's like, haha. And then Shelton's mom is aghast at this. I would be and the too. Was that, about, like, she watches, movie. <laughs> that she watches pornography. And she says Val is going to hell tonight. And then her and Shelton storm off and Val's like, hit. Yeah, fuck Val Penis. Yeah. Yes. No, no. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. You end up in one of his movies. No. Now, you, now, you, now you're talking about a guy that has to let it go. Yeah, but his penis got cut off, dude. Yeah. Val it, it has got to let the got to let the dome piece free. You know, like you thought Chavo was bad. Chavo's like notoriously bald. Like he's the guy that like it is kind of balding. Val yeah. Val penis does not look good balding. No. no, he's bad. Yeah, he's gotta let it go. And I mean, he shaves it, but dude, he's got to be on top of that shit. God, dude, and it was just three years ago. He had that flow and mane too, right? Yeah, it's only been like four dude. or five years. Four or five. Fine, and four years. Lost. Sean Morley yeah. is gonna come out and beat Christopher Dane on <laughs> pay per view. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I will say, you know, at first I kind of like Sheldon Benjamin's mom because it's like, uh, you know what? Bruh. I get that. What? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Don't bro me. This episode, I turned. I, I, this is too much. Yeah, yeah, you can throw that one. Now, was it the promo, Nico, that turned you? The backstage segment, or was it what perspired in the match? I, I guess should we wait for that until we get to the match? Because I think we have something yeah, else we'll to build on. We'll, we'll, we'll wait till the match. Yeah, we got the okay. tag team match coming out. You got Carlito and Chris mm-hmm. Masters versus Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels. And I thought the match was great. I thought it was funny. Fucking... <laughs> they just mm-hmm. they were just beating the shit out of Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle was just like looking off into the stands. He kept uh pointing at the guy in the crowd and just like laughing at him. And Davari got up on the the apron with him and Shawn's like, Come on, dude, I'm bleeding <laughs> and Angle's like, I don't give a fuck about you, dude <laughs> and then Shawn just comes out and just fucking kicks him, tags him in and just leaves. <laughs> it's just a yeah. very funny match. I loved it. Carlito t- and Chris well, Masters it- get the pin. Yeah, not a not a pin. Chris, Chris. Oh no, he, oh, that's right. He, he he choked out Kurt. Kurt uh, Kurt's like that. He didn't attack. Yeah, no. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt didn't attack. You're right. He didn't pin. Dude, like, how refreshing is it to see like a smart baby face? Right. My like God. so many times, even a day, even with the best booked baby faces in modern wrestling, they're almost all idiots. Like, I think AEW is doing a better job of having smarter baby faces. But even there, they're not that smart. They're just a little smarter. They're not, like, doing Shawn Michaels smart shit, you know? Like, Shawn Michaels is just, like, even if he loses this match, he just looks good. Because it's like, he's got screwed twice. He kicks this guy. He lets him get pinned. Him gets, my bad, submitted. And then, uh, Aydavar yells at him, like, what are you doing? How could you abandon your tag partner? And he just kicks him, too. Yep. And it's it's awesome. It's just great to see. It's like, yeah, Shawn Michaels is fucking the goat. Yeah, I think there's a nuance to be had with, like, a smart heel and a dumb face. I'm sorry. I, I mean, the other way around. Uh, a, a smart face and a, a, a dumb bad guy, you know? I want the dumb heel. Yeah. But, I mean, Shawn, you know, he, like you said, Nico, he is the goat. You know, he's, you know, got the crowd in the palm of his hands, literally, you know? Like, I, I was yeah. fucking pop for that, you know? Yeah, he got him. Too, Kurt, Kurt got his fucking dude, comeuppance. He, he's so good. He's still smooth in the ring. I mean, like, the dude's a master of the game. And I'm glad he's down in Florida teaching some people some of the his old skill sets, even though, uh, from what Daniel Bryan said, he's not exactly the best teacher. Wow. <sighs> what do you mean? Scripps looks great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What you think of this match, pal? I don't know if we're doing on time, but uh, in short, I disagree with everything everybody said. <laughs> oh. oh, let's hear about it. That's unbelievable. Okay. okay, listen, I can bury Shawn Michaels all I want. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole podcast. 
but Carlito is the most boring fucking wrestler oh, no. I have ever seen no, 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 in my life. You, bro. Kurt Angle and Carlito <laughs> work a headlock takeover for like three straight minutes of this 16 minute match, by the way, and it felt longer. <laughs> uh, so get the bag, by the way, just keep that going i don't know why the well i know why the match was structured like this is because chris masters can't fucking wrestle this whole match the heels are getting heat on them that's not how a wrestling match works and it's just headlocks it's just headlock takeover it's just working holds on carlito specifically eventually chris masters comes in flails around does whatever the kurt angle davari part is the only entertaining part about any of this again a match that goes easily 10 minutes too long davari's funny kurt angle's funny and then kurt angle gets fucking tapped out by some guy that looks 40 years old i don't know how a match with kurt angle and Shawn michaels is this fucking boring listen nothing will ever compare to the boringness of orlando jordan on smackdown also okay i also forgot <laughs> one fu- i also forgot one thing uh sean michaels i think uh tags kurt in by punching him in the head that was yes pretty- <laughs> and the ref counted that as a legal tag. Sweet. So there's like two. If this match went eight minutes, it would be fine, but it went so much longer. And Carlito sucks. I don't know why this guy is popular. I don't know why he has so many signs. He can't do anything. Have you considered that he spits in the face of people who don't like to be cool? I, I, I have considered this. I have been spat in the face of. I understand that. <laughs> I understand I am the nerd emoji right now. That's fine. I have corn cobbed myself on this podcast. That is okay because nobody will do it. But fuck Carlito. We will be the anti-Carlito podcast. This is my bit. Also, fuck Shawn Michaels, but that's fine. He's, not, he's nowhere near that bad. I just want to add this in. I mean, the whole eating an apple and spitting thing is literally stealing from Razor Ramon. I mean, it's one of his vignettes. Wow. So, like, yeah, he kind of, even the gimmick is just a redo. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm i with, I, yeah, Carlito sucks, dude. I thought it was great. At least three Carlito. Stars, three stars. I call it down the middle. Best match of the um, show. One and a half. <laughs> I was entertained somewhat. That was fun. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do. Two and a half, three. Two point seven five for Mika. <laughs> uh, fine. If I, I guess I can't rate things. You're gonna do it for me. Go. You said between <laughs> it. I said yeah, and I, I, I decided on three. Okay, fair enough. All right, we got. Let's see what what is next. Oh yeah, this Sean... is Sean Vince backstage. Yep. Uh, where Vince basically says, Sean, how can you do this? How can you abandon Kurt Angle? But also, he's also kind of into it because Vince is a shithead. He's like, I mean, it was pretty cool, but also you shouldn't have done that. Uh, Vince says, you can trust me to make the very best Raw every week. I love to go on television and lie. And uh, then he books Kurt and Sean for next week in a singles match. Basically all that Ooh. happens here. So let's see how they fuck that up. Then we got uh, Triple H backstage promo. Yeah, Triple H standing in the foreground as uh-huh. the camera comes up on him with his biceps flex to look absolutely huge. I respect the carny of this immensely. You can just feel yeah, the insecurity not- that pervades off of Triple H just coming right through and how this whole thing is set up. And then, again, a pretty st- kind of a nothing promo. He yeah. makes fun of John Cena for losing. Triple H uh, is the one constant uh, in WWE. And he says he's going to win the Rumble and win the belt. So he announced himself for the Rumble, I guess, is what we were doing. I mean... Not a 20-minute promo. I, I like... So good work yeah. by him. Thank you, Base Yeah, age. I liked it. I thought was, he did good. I mean... Fine. It, yeah, as a base... I mean, it's his basic Triple H promo, but, yeah. like... I mean, there are so many... Like like I said, because I, I, I got to compare it to... Th- like, there's so many people who say, like, I'm going to win or I'm going to do this, and you just don't buy it. And Triple H, generally, what, for whatever the reason, like, when he says, like, I'm a constant, it's like, yeah honestly kind of all like you didn't say anything wrong here right it's all be- pretty believable stuff yeah i mean he this was like what a minute maybe it wasn't oh, no no but it's just he, he scaled i i had just had to give him props because like putting him with the big show was the worst fucking thing like that match was dreadful oh. so it's good to see him just get to talk get to do what he does best and you know you hype him up for the royal rumble it's good so we'll we'll shoot through some uh backstage promos uh, what other think, promos uh, layla and michelle or whatever like get into the bed that they're gonna put into the live sex celebration it was maria victoria yes. and tori oh okay no yeah. i'm sorry raw no, I, I was okay. i was a generation too late <laughs> you're okay no i mean i think they're on the roster but which which is weird because they're feuding <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, but uh, I get it. That's not on the sex appeal. Yep, and then Grissom interviews Edge and Lita, and they say, we're going to have sex. Cool. Commercial. And then they're like, hey, yeah. Stacy Keebler was on Dancing with the Stars. She got fourth place. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And now we got ourselves a Royal Rumble qualifying match again. I thought this match was d- decent. I thought it was fine. I don't really like Val Venus as a wrestler. He, he got in there. It was way better than fucking Shelton versus Viscera. Shelton can go. Oh, yeah. Shelton can fucking go. I love yeah. it. No, Shelton's great. Val is solid. He can. He. he you're never gonna get like a great match out of him, but he can do a solid match. It's yeah. like just enough where you're still watching, but you're never enough where you're like going crazy. He, he's all gimmick at the end of the day. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to it, but I mean, we had Valvinus missing his money shot. Roll up by Shelton gets a two. He gets kicked, and then fucking big ass fucking T bone, and Shelton is going to the Royal Rumble. What do you Shelton, think? yeah. Stabbed him in the ass with a needle. And stabbed him in the ass with a needle to stagger him. And then Shelton hits a T-bone. It was a hairpin, I believe. I don't like how, like, because to me, I I thought the dynamic was going to be like, she's not like a heel, but she's like a matter of fact one. Like, you best beat this man's ass in the ring, because otherwise he ain't a Benjamin. You know, but like when she's just out there like being like a hypocrite cheater i don't think it works as well i I think like her thing is like this is how i book it yeah she might like anytime she interferes it has to be provoked but like she is still springing on benjamin to pick a bunch of fights and shit i think when she's too heelish it kind of just takes it away because other than like uh obviously the cheating she's kind of presented as like you know just a classic southern mom uh, helping her son out i don't even think it's yeah very stereotypical yeah, I, I, I do. I don't even see it as I mean, heelish. It, I think, I think they're pr- trying to make it like a, a face, like which is kind of funny. Uh, they're, they're not doing a great job. No, but it's kind of funny that way. No, no, uh, it's like again, if they do take it more of that face route, I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But uh, if they're doing what they're doing and they keep going this route, no, I think it's bad because I think it's one of those things where it's like I don't know, it, it just doesn't mesh right now yeah. but once they go maybe more a little closer to faces like face like i think it'll get good again and if, what would you, what would be the star rate quarter mm. quarter wow I give, like quarter. I give it like a one i thought it was fine no you're right no i i'll give it a one i guess i, one I wasn't too entertained it was only like four and a half yeah. minutes so i gave it points for that yeah. 432 says cage match. Yeah, next backstage segment is there do, is the McMahons all dressed up in a like Roman Emperor outfits for the Royal Rumble, awesome. I guess. The theme. Steph with a very respectful dress on. It's fine. That's Shane true, at one point guess. stabbed Vince and hit the Shane dance. I thought that was fun. <laughs> that was so awesome. That was Me like too, the best. Shanicus. So oh, I man. saw this. And I was like, you know, I mean, there's a lot of sons who kill their dad for the throne, but they went with the Julius. I mean, it's Vince Kaiser, or Vince Caesar, as they say. And uh, I I loved it. I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was stupid. And yeah, as soon as Shane stabs him in the back and does the Shane dance, after he's like, no more lines next year, I, I thought that was pretty good. That, that was a great way to sell. That's just unbelievable. So now we got another... Another Royal Rumble qualifying match. Just get them all out of the way. We got the World Tag Team Champion Kane, who never wrestles in a tag team match against Schnitzky. The match <laughs> was less than a minute. Kane just steamrolls him, big boot, choke slam, side slam. Doesn't matter. It's over. Kane wins. Kills half star. Fucking Schnitzky, man. That was the main event. That was the last yeah, match on the show. St- <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that was not the main event. Well, yeah, but match wise. <laughs> match wise, yeah, but I, I don't know. I'd say that last segment is high enough to be a match oh man <laughs> not a real one but it no that was a half star uh we already know kane's fucking dominant he didn't need this snitsky didn't need this this is stupid why even put it on tv i was bored i don't care about kane why is he shave his head like that we know he has more hair fuck kane <laughs> yeah fuck kane negative star. I, I i i know what's coming up in a couple of months and it's only gonna get worse but I will say this is my favorite of his uh, ring entrances, songs-wise. Oh, yeah, you gotta love Finger so. 11, dude. I do, I do. It's it's yeah, a slow kind of... Uh, it's so good. That's good. Everything else, not feeling. Nope. Anyone else got anything about this match? Nope. Didn't really enjoy it too much. Nope. Edge on the mic and told us I, I... that was just his first casualty on the path to Mania, and he's going to eliminate 29 people at the Rumble. 
However, what if he doesn't enter at one or two? What if he does not have the opportunity to get rid of 29 people? Does he then have to throw more people into the ring and then throw them out? Kane, I don't think you did your math right. I don't think you knew what was going on. I have an objection to this, sir, and I hope somebody got fired for this error. Wow. Yep. Damn straight. He's That's speaking right. fast. Yep. Kane's just a liar. Yeah. Oh, a- average politician making a declaration. <laughs> yep. Which, hey, makes sense. Now it's time for the life sex celebration. Woo! Right. How do we even just talk forever. about this? Like, is there anything uh, we can talk about here? <laughs> Let's talk Bruh. about Edge and Lita. Uh, Edge and Lita, and what we've watched so far, have been awesome every time they're on screen together. They're like, so goddamn I, sexy. That, yeah, I guess that too. They're just so good. They're so smooth. I mean, there's. I mean, it is so obvious why they put the fucking belt the on crowd Edge. Looks I mean, uncomfortable the whole time. They showed <laughs> yes. Kid in the what? intro to this in the crowd. What the are you doing this is the most awkward shit i've seen in my life <laughs> oh, i got one thing to mention because i did do a small amount of research why because <laughs> i had to <laughs> i had to basically i i just wanted to know where where the fuck did they get this idea from because this is kind of unhinged and at, at uh, least last wh- night because they showed yeah, a f- backstage promo which was allegedly taken like after Elimination Chamber was not Elimination, New Year's Revolution was off the air. That Joey was it Joey Styles that did a backstage interview, and then Edge declared that they would celebrate it his way, which he said was the live sex celebration. So they knew at least 24 hours in advance. Okay, so <laughs> apparently this was actually like brought up around the Money in the Bank match. This idea. Because uh, they knew they were going to give Edge the belt, I guess, when they gave it to him. And uh, somebody raised the question. What Vince McMahon asks, what does the perfect heel do when they win the WWE title for the first time? And apparently, former writer Christopher Joseph said, if I were Edge, I would have sex in the middle of the ring with my girlfriend. <laughs> apparently, go. Vince's eyes went up, and he booked it immediately. And he was drooling at all the possibilities that the segment could provide. So there were just no changing his mind about this. This was his idea. Yeah, so Edge is here, and he says, You probably think that Lita and I went back to my hotel last night and performed some sexual gymnastics, but we didn't. We saved ourselves for his live, unbridled, torrid, passionate sex he's about to have in front of the live crowd. And then, then they cut to some fucking like sleazy-ass music, I would say, and they just start taking yep. off the clothes, taking <laughs> off the boots, Taking off oh, man, you the are, shirt. You're going too fast, buddy. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> so fucking sexy, dude. <laughs> I, I I honestly don't believe you think that. No, it was... <laughs> I, I don't know. Was this titillating to you guys? Did you enjoy? No, any no, of... <laughs> not at all. No, it wasn't. What the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? You don't like Edge standing there awkwardly in his underwear? No, they all look very, so very well. clearly, very clearly already has a heart on, which I mean, yeah. understandable, I but you. come on. Yeah, I mean, look, look, if, if you were in that fucking position, that'd be a hard thing to cover up, Man. you know, like, my God, I would say, I mean, if this was obviously not in the middle of a wrestling ring, I, I, I could see this working. Yeah. But uh also, it is it wasn't, very well, I'm sorry if it wasn't 20 minutes. It was so long anyway. it... of a second. Oh yeah, no, which I mean, you know what? I'm okay with it taking forever because you know, I, I kind of wish this was a little later. I would have had like 2500 words just on the segment alone. <laughs> uh hmm. no, I mean it go for the boot. It go for the tops. He, uh, he gets her on the bed. I think the bra comes off at some point. Then the uh, then he comes out of the sheets and he's got the uh, panties in his mouth. And it's like, you know, I think the biggest issue with this segment is that this is 2006 TV 14 Raw. I think people thought they were actually going to do it. And I think a lot of them were kind of uncomfortable with it. But this is 2006. If you don't want to see somebody like Lita have sex, you're gay. So, like, hey. yeah. nobody's going to really protest this or anything, right? Yeah. Or the audience is going to be, like, speed this up. Because you do not want to be the guy to say, like, 
I don't want to see Lita naked or the possibility of that. Man. But, of course, this is not why this is the greatest segment of no, all time. Wait, this on. is just the setup. Unfortunately, Lita did get exposed when they were taking off the bra. Yeah, did. They didn't show it on Peacock. Thank You're me. right, they she did. They cut it out, but on the live feed, it did come out. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> that sucks the, so fucking much. The, the boob came out and you went crazy? The boob went out, everyone went crazy. Yeah, fucking, yeah Ric Flair is here. Woo! And he says, Whoa! brother, Edge, your ass in the bed. I'm going to come give you the Nature Boy special. <laughs> oh, no skipping the first half of that. No, it's fine. Bruh. <laughs> no, it's not. He comes out and he's like, Edge, you don't even know what it means to walk. You, when you actually walk for a title, that's when you deserve to have a title. And let me tell you, your ass in bed. So now it's time, like, time for me to show you how a real man does what you can't even do. Woo! And then he starts strutting his way fucking down. <laughs> and then Ed uh, fucking kills him. Just straight up kills him. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. He got, he got fucking uh, blue balled. And he said, I'm angry. Yeah. I, I, God, Ric Flair, he's, once again, he's one of the best, and even in this fucking crazy segment, he proves it, just, dude, he just comes out there, he takes that fucking chair shot to the head, he's bleeding everywhere like a stuck pig, I mean, he goes through that fucking table, so, oh, that's great. I'm so happy there's a live sex celebration, and Flair goes, hold up, I want to bleed in this segment. <laughs> yeah. I need to find only, a way Only to Flair. <laughs> and then John Cena came Flair. in, and John Cena's here. I thought he wasn't supposed to interfere, but maybe since Flair well, appeared no. first, it's all game. Yep, yeah. And yeah, then he yep. chases Edge Cena, out of I'm... there, and Lita's just stuck naked, like actually naked, because her fucking clothes got thrown away. <laughs> well, and luckily fucking, I'm. And then Cena pretty... commits a fucking crime and lifts up the fucking blankets and sees her, and he goes, "Not bad." And the crowd goes crazy <laughs> for it. Oh yeah. You gotta remember the psychology of the crowd and the audience. This is still acceptable, which what, we've already made our opinions clear on how, what is acceptable. John Cena commits crime on live TV. As always. As she always. does find clothes because at the end he takes her out, oh, uh, yeah. puts, her in, the, puts yeah. her in the fireman's carry, and just watches him and is scared. Then he hits an FU on her, and the crowd loses their mind. Yeah. Just, 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 uh, you know, because we got to ruin it for those who are like, oh, man, she was absolutely completely naked. I mean, no. it's very clear that the panties he pulled out were, like, staged. What? Obviously. Yeah. Obviously, the top, we could tell it wasn't because of the cut footage, but... Yeah, she yeah, put that edges staged. on, by the way, if you yeah. fucking freaks were curious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm sure there's some raw live version on the internet if you really want to jerk no. off the weed is exposed. No. No, Nico. <laughs> I, I advise you don't look it up. Five stars. F yep. Yeah, he just... Well, did we mention he f you to? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. didn't give her the f you. Yeah. yeah. And Lita with a shirt on got f you. Because it, it clearly shows what Edge cares about more. Damn straight. And that is absolutely him and the belt. So now... So, excellent. Not only did we just also, have that... Oh, no, go on, Nico. No, no, go on. And Lita, Lita took it like a champ. I thought she yeah. she sold it well. Didn't mean to interrupt. Now that, that's all good. But we got Kurt Angle it's all good. on the next show because on SmackDown, he won the World Heavyweight Championship. So now he is the champion. And he's going to be on both shows for whatever reason, from what I've seen. All right. Hmm. Why? How did he win? Um. So yeah, Batista cares. Huge... Nobody cares about that shit. Yeah, SmackDown. <laughs> fuck SmackDown. I mean, yeah, but he's on Raw, too. So if you want to know the yeah, context... I... He yeah, wins a battle know. royal. Yeah, he wins a battle yeah, yeah, you, you need a fucking you need a raw boy to come in and fucking shape that show up. Fuck you, Damn. SmackDown. Damn. Fuck the Fuck color yeah. blue. <laughs> Fuck you, Pete. Fuck you, Narum. Fuck everybody listening to the SmackDown show. Raw up because we raw down bitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Ain't no question. We we I was saying that. that flicking off my computer monitor, by the way. <laughs> 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 no. Do we have like anybody said, on Raw, corners this week? I don't. I don't uh, know if Dave's even a part of this right now, so we'll see. I don't either. Yeah. Well, uh, are we doing the corners now? Or? We'll get the corners uh, in a separate thing, and then it'll be on the the last episode. So we all record this at different times. Whoever's listening, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I I don't know why, but oh I my. appreciate you. Nobody's listening, and if you are, fuck you. you know, yeah, I go thought, fuck yourself. I I go listen to something better. 
real quick. I'm well, just going to go on the cage match. There's a, there's a lot of things I could tell you, but I've been advised not to say such things <laughs> on a call or a podcast. So you know what they are, and I suggest you do them. We, we have a review of the show from uh, January of this year from Curtis Bald, and he says, Good show after New Year's Revolution. The sex celebration was exactly what this show needed to success. Who wrote that? Kurt yeah. is bald. Yeah, that makes sense. I agree. I, that's all. I don't I even mean, need to read to the be... other ones. That's that's perfect. It what it needed for yeah. success. Well, like, hear, what the hold f- on. Here's a fuck else here, was here's a here's my review from a uh, uh, date of recording two thousand uh, current year. Uh, this main event segment should have killed the business forever. <laughs> <Fair enough>. What? <laughs> I think we raw down. Here's yeah. the secret ending of every episode. Uh, oh. Fuck Shawn Michaels. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 